First Corinthians, first chapter. First Corinthians, first chapter. But God has chosen twenty seventh verse. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world and things which are despised has God chosen. Yea, and things which are not, that simply don't appear to exist, they are a pile of beans, a hill of beans. They are not, they are fit for nothing, to bring to naught things that appear formidable, that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. How amazing! You know, folks, when uh, there is any hard assignment or position, especially in a situation which appears to be a crumbling one, who is the kind of person whom you would choose? The most brilliant person, the person who is a top notcher, a person who is got few to compare with him or her. Now that's the kind of person you and I would want to choose for a situation that requires retrieval from an awful abysm. Well, you know that sometimes we can choose very falsely based on rhetoric and based on huge promises which seem to be just in keeping with political platforms. People like to have it so. But you know, when we come to the things of God, we have to be very real, honest. You see, a certain amount of basic honesty is required. When a man gets a zero, he must say, hey, I flunked the exam. You know what I got? The grand total of zero. Why? What's, what's so humbling about acknowledging a fact? You see, I don't find it so difficult to acknowledge facts, you know. They may go right against me. They may set me apart as a foolish fellow. Notwithstanding, truth is truth. Fact is a fact. You can turn fiction into fact or f fact into fiction. And so there you are. Whom would you choose? You and I would go and choose the fellow who is voluble, that is, free with his rhetoric, could talk well. Okay, and then we would see the flashy fellow. You know, flashing your wares or flashing your little talent. You know, you can take in a lot of people that way. Outward show. It's, if you come to the bottom of it, 
a lot of it is outward show and uh, is it that shakespeare who expressed it this way all the world says is a stage and men are but actors on it <laughs> so i am an actor right <laughs> i don't want to be an actor i want to be real you see if i am only an actor my wife would know that right away <laughs> my children would know it and soon everybody would know it oh this fellow knows how to play play around he thinks the whole world's a stage you know we put on an act that that's the plain fact but acting won't work too long you can't maintain that same pose and that same strain of acting how long the truth will be out so but god says i am going to choose this foolish vessel maybe he will get a little honest about it and recognize his dependency upon me you know very clever people depend upon their lies and their acting as i said and their superficial glitter that's clever people but you know sometimes you see the foolish fellows they're sitting in a corner you know so grumpy or or downcast or or gloomy or all as though they have just tumbled out of bed <laughs> you would say hey not that fellow no 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 not that fellow oh here somebody is so flashy i want that this other person god has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise all right there is a assignment also attached to it you see the world by wisdom knew not god says the word of god you know we have got a lot of wise people and i am just seeing the measure of my ignorance i'm just discovering it rather late don't you think eugenics which were employed back in the spartan days by which babies who appeared to be weak were killed and the teutonic tribes teutonic tribes are the tribes of northern europe especially the german and the british and their ancestors okay the old barbaric scots also killed both their weak babies and the mothers they said eugenics we of course they didn't uh, talk in terms of science in those days but the idea was 
We must produce a master race of brilliant people, top people. So, 400,000 people were killed in Germany. 400 people, these fellows are useless. They are mad, they are insane, they are useless. What kind of uh, babies will they produce? So get rid of them, 400,000. And then, well, were 400,000 were sterilized, okay? And 200,000 were killed, just killed. Like rats or vermin. 200,000 eugenics. That is the wisdom of the world. Let's produce some master race. Let's produce some real, wise, thinking, able people. Huh. The Bible tells me we are fools for Jesus' sake. We are fools for Jesus' sake. Now, do you want to be called a fool? First Corinthians, fourth chapter and the tenth verse. First Corinthians, fourth chapter and the tenth verse. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honorable, but we are despised. You know, this upward mobility is, is as it is called, upward mobility. <laughs> a balloon, you put more hydrogen into a huge balloon, the higher it flies. You know, folks? Uh, empty vessels make the most noise, they used to say, in the old days. Okay, anyway. But there is a kind of wisdom which makes people fools. And there is a kind of wisdom that says, Lord, I am a fool. I need to know the way. I need you to direct my life. This is not just a matter of Sunday talk. This is not just a matter of a club affiliation. You see, well, what is happening today is reducing our relationship to Jesus to a club affiliation. You know, my dear friends, I was a member of a club, a tennis club. And there was the clubhouse where people would be playing their cards and uh, eating and uh, having their cups of coffee or tea. I never cared to go to the clubhouse although it was just 30 yards away from the tennis court. 30, 50 yards away. I thought it is an idle occupation to be sitting around with these fellows. So I would have my brisk game of tennis and off I would go on my old bicycle. So, folks, there is a kind of wisdom which says, Oh, Lord, I am weak, but you are strong. Just like we heard 
now in the song. Lead me from all wrong. I'm foolish. That's exactly what I seem to choose. The glittering thing. All that glitters is not gold. But that's exactly what I go and choose. So I run after a mirage. I run after false dreams. I want reality. Whatever it takes and whatever it costs. I want to see my foolishness. Now what's wrong about that? I want to know my foolishness. And I don't want any delay about the matter either. Because the more I defer and delay, I am going to lose valuable opportunities and time to glorify God. So we are fools for Christ's sake, we are told. Now this upward mobility which we are talking about, <laughs> it's a big house, a big car, a big show, uh, you know, a big paycheck. All right. There, there are certain things which are necessary. But there are certain things which must not become the center of our focus. Now, this upward mobility does not include any moral issues. Upward mobility requires you to get undressed. Upward mobility requires you to keep up with the crowd by exposing yourself. Now, is that upward mobility? No. It is a mind that is hellward bent. But you know how wrong we have become. I do not know how true this is, but someone said to me, do you realize that uh, the presidential prayer was canceled or something? Whether it was canceled or whatever, I, I'm not sure, because I have not gone into it. But if that had happened, what does that show? That shows a mental immaturity. That's all it shows. You can't play with a nation. You can't play with truth. Whoever made that decision, was it upward mobility? No, it wasn't. How many times Abraham Lincoln called the nation to prayer during that awful conflict where freedom was the issue? And it seemed to be almost going out of the hands of the president. My dear people, I have been in the days of prayer in the last war, when all the soldiers would march in and their officers, all ready to go to the front to be killed by Japanese bullets and ambushes. And I used to sing those, you see those young fellows, British Tommies and American GIs, sing and conduct themselves with reverence.
What a tragedy. There is no upward mobility where morality is concerned. Today, the big issue seems to be, the debating point seems to be, who is going to be our next bishop or preacher? A homosexual? That might be the right choice. Is that a matter to debate? A man who can't control himself. A man who cannot conduct himself as a responsible member of society. Do you mean to put such a man in the platform? Or in the pulpit? Is that a debating point? Is that upward mobility? No, not at all. That is a renunciation of all sense and moral perception. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Let us pray. Loving Father, that you should be mindful of people like us, ordinary people. There are so many brilliant people, Lord. People with such wonderful brains. Oh, a fellow like me is a kindergarten boy. Oh, my father. But how is it that you say that you choose the foolish things of this world, the weak things, the things which are base and despised. We see it in the scripture, we see it in history, how the resurrection power takes over and begins to motivate, to discipline, to purify. How oh, our thoughts, our thinking, our whole frame, our makeup, so that we fit into the plans of God. Oh, Father, we want those enduring eternal plans to be fulfilled in our lives. We don't want to be like a whiff of chaff with one little breath, poof, it's blown off. All our dreams and all our efforts. No, no, no. We want the builder and the maker to be God, the Almighty, the Eternal Savior that there will be something coming out of each one of our lives that will endure through eternity. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.